I've just found a home assistant gem that no one is talking about. I'm going to show you how you can track events like cooking and sleeping by combining multiple sensors into one. This video has been made possible thanks to the guys at Data Camp, which have sponsored this video. So we all know that smart home companies want to collect our own data. But what if we understood the power of data and we leveraged it in our favor? Data Camp is an online learning platform which makes it super easy to acquire data skills in an easy and convenient way for everyone. I've personally been a data engineer for over 10 years and I absolutely adore this platform. If you're a home assistant user, I'd recommend you check out the Python fundamentals track and if you're a little bit more advanced, the machine learning track. You can get access to the first chapter of any data camp course by following the link in the description down below. The base and sensor uses states from multiple sensors and different probabilities and outcomes to determine if something's happening or not. Think of the good night scene. You want it to trigger when everyone's asleep, but how do you know that? What things can you actually track? So let's say for example, the blinds are down and it's after a certain hour and your phone is charging. If you combine all of these elements together, you can statistically assume that you're actually sleeping. You don't have to be a statistician to understand the base on probability theory. In a nutshell, it's a way to estimate if events have occurred or not. How does it estimate? Well, it's estimate based on previous conditions that we've predetermined ourselves. In today's tutorial video, we're going to be creating the cooking sensor. Why am I actually interested in knowing if I'm cooking or not? Well, first of all, I want to trigger my robot vacuum as soon as I finish cooking. These are the sensors that I'm going to be using to estimate if I'm cooking or not. I have a contact sensor on my fridge, so every time I open the fridge or I close the fridge, I will know. Thanks to templating, I actually can figure out when was the last time the door was closed or open. Temperature is also something that changes when we're cooking and you normally see a spike in temperature when we start cooking and then that slowly decreases down as the kitchen cools down. So if you've got a temperature sensor in your kitchen, perhaps closer to where you're actually cooking and you compare and take a temperature, for example, from your hallway or somewhere else in your home and you can compare the two. And if you could calculate a little difference between the two, again, thanks to templating, you can take that into consideration. Obvious ones are motion and occupancy in the kitchen. If someone needs to be in the kitchen. Now, interesting point, you could perhaps put something in the oven and then leave the kitchen. So even if you don't have occupancy and motion, cooking event might still be occurring. Other sensors I actually thought of adding, but I don't really have available for this video, are energy monitoring. So you could be energy monitoring, for example, the oven and the hob directly. Vibration sensors, you can place them around chopping boards. Now I think it's gonna be easier if I just jump into the code and give you a YAML example. Jump into your Visual Studio or File Editor, whatever add-on you are using and go to your configuration.yaml. In here, you can add in from line 480, what I've got, binary sensor. If you've really got binary sensor, then skip that and just add from line 481, wherever you have binary sensor in your configuration. Let me break this down to you. Two parts. The first part is defining the actual sensor. So what is the sensor? and underneath we have something called the observations. So these are the basically the other sensors, the real sensors that make up the main sensor. So we always need to give it a name. I'm calling it cooking. You could call it whatever you want. Remember, because this is a binary sensor, the outcomes are going to be on or off. Platform, you need to use the, is the Bayesian platform. Now prior, what does this mean? Prior is the um, likelihood, the statistical likelihood that this is actually occurring, that the event is occurring without any of the observations triggering. So could we be cooking really without any of this happening? Potentially, potentially it could, it could be possible. Um, I've put a low weight on that 0.1. The probability threshold is actually what we're looking for. So this is so basically we need to get a, a sum of all of the observations and the prior needs to be higher than the probability threshold. Once it's crossed the threshold, then the, bin the binary sensor will turn on. If it hasn't crossed the threshold, then it will stay off. Here we can see the keyword observations and note that we have uh, an indentation. And each block is starts with uh, a list and we can use platform like platform state. And we can also use things like numeric and template. I've currently got three 
observation set up or you can set up as many as you want. First observation is pretty straightforward. I've got a motion sensor in the kitchen. I'm looking for occupancy. If it actually is occupied, then I'm giving a score of uh, 0.2 and remember to put the two state. The two state actually means that we're looking for on. You could do this in reverse. So for example, if you're looking at um, no motion, right? For example, a sleeping scene, then you would put uh, the motion sensor to off because you expect all motion sensors to be off because you're, you know, you're assuming someone's sleeping. In this case, we're doing cooking, so we want our motion sensor to be on. I'm always given a probability given false zero. So you can give probabilities of the event actually happening even if the current thing is false. Um, I'm just setting it at zero because it's simpler for me, but you can change this to whatever value you want. Obviously, this value will be lower than that value to, to make any sense. The second thing that I'm actually doing, I'm using a little bit of templating to check when was the last time the fridge was actually, um, you know, touched in the last 30 minutes. Uh, let me break this down to you. So just gonna copy this code in, jump into our developer tools and actually talk you through this piece of templating. If you're getting value of this video, remember to like it and also share this video as much as you can, and I will really appreciate that. This is how you can calculate the duration between an event in Home Assistant and the current time. First thing you need is the current time, which you can define as now with these brackets, and you can see it on the right-hand side, the current time. The last open time, this is really, really cool uh, from Home Assistant. Basically, each attribute that you have has a last change, so any anything in Home Assistant you find out the last time the status changed. So I know I said last open, actually, to be more precise, this is last open or closed. But because the fridge doesn't stay open that much, pretty much, we can say it's the same thing. But it's any status changed. And the way you define it, you do states dot binary sensor dot fridge dot last change. So once we've got these two together, we need to apply a function and then we need to subtract the two together. So now we can see expressed in seconds the difference between these two timestamps. 43 minutes was the last time the fridge status changed. What we can do is we can put a uh, comparison. So what I had earlier, I had greater than and this is expressed in seconds, so say 900 seconds and it gives me my true and false. The third way is the temperature in the kitchen. Now I want the temperature in the kitchen to be higher than 3 degrees. Now this is 3 degrees Celsius. Why 3? Because the hallway is normally always colder than the kitchen and I don't want a false reading. So I wanted at least three degrees, which I think seems reasonable for a room that's heating up a lot. And let's look a little bit at this templating. So we've got a nice false. So let's break it down. Let's get our state. We have a nest temperature reading and a hallway sensor. So if I wrap it around brackets, we can get the actual values. We have 19.7 degrees and this is the uh, kitchen temperature. So I just do copy and paste this in and get the real sensor. There we go. So 18.1. So as I said, the, the hallway is always lower. In this case, you know, one degrees closer to two. Uh, bear in mind that in the code that I'm actually showing you, there's no rounding. So you might want to do rounding before doing the comparison. So now once you've got your um, binary sensor complete, you can, as usual, check your configuration and restart Home Assistant and jump into the developer tools once it's back. Now I'm back in my developer tools. Now this is where the real fun is going to start and this is where my fun is going to start too. You look at this and you're going to immediately going to need to change your parameters that you've set. I can absolutely tell you for now that no one is cooking downstairs, but this is on. So here we can see well, what observations are actually triggering. And we can see a few observations picking up from here. We can see the uh, template and we can see other information, a like kitchen occupancy. We can see other observed events happening. But for some reason it is triggering. So let's go back to the code. Okay, let's look at these one by one. So what I would do is take your first occupancy sensor and let's check if this is actually giving me a reading. So occupancy is off. The fridge door status. Let's check it again. So this theoretically should be false. Okay, so I think I found my first bug. It looks like that I'm switching this and this should be switched the other way around. So I have more than 15 minutes passed 
yes, that is true, but I actually don't want that. I probably want the reverse. So I want the actually less than 900. So we can make our change to the code. The fridge has been open in the last 15 minutes. Now let's take the last one. We can go over and troubleshoot it. And we can see this is false. Now, even if we have found that the fridge door sensor had a bug in it and the weight of it was 0.3, but the prior weight was 0.4. So my understanding of this is that it should be, should sum up to 0.4 and it really shouldn't cross the probability threshold 0.7. So why is it actually giving me this uh, reading? I've made one more change. I've put prior to zero I'm trying to debug this and I understand why this wasn't working. It will not trigger unless it's one of these three occurrences. Let me know in the comment section down below which sensors you want to create with this new platform. Thing is, if you really want to take your home assistant game to the next level, this isn't enough on its own. There's actually one more thing you need to learn, which is templating. Without it, you can't really do things like checking when was the last time the fridge was open, and other cool stuff. And that's why you shouldn't really ignore this video over here. It's gonna take what you just learned and make it 10 times more powerful.